everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Shannon Wood and I work out of the annual giving office at Holy Cross. Um, and on behalf of myself and my colleagues, Tom Cadigan and Hannah Nugent from Alumni Relations, we're so excited to have you here um, for our City View New York City panel tonight. We have a great group of Holy Cross young alumni here to talk through their Metro New York City experiences, everything from renting apartment, living, working, traveling um, in New York City, and we're really excited to have them here tonight. We have um, a bunch of pre-submitted questions that people were able to submit in the registration panel that we will um, review throughout the presentation tonight, but if you do have any questions, feel free to use the chat function at the bottom of your screen, um, and we will be able to kind of take those questions as is and get to as many of them as possible. We are here for an hour tonight, so um, plenty of time to get through as many questions as are submitted. Um, so I will pass it over now to my lovely um, co-panelists tonight who will do a brief introduction, um, a little bit about you know, their Holy Cross experience, who they are, what they do for work, um, and kind of how they ended up in New York after graduation. Um, Casey, I'll start with you if that's okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, as Shannon said, my name is Casey Cardi. I graduated class of 2018. I currently work in communications, public relations for food and beverage um, at Hunter Public Relations. And I live in Hoboken, New Jersey. So I commute, well, commute into Manhattan on, on a normal week. I would commute into Manhattan on the path, but um, as I'm sure a lot of you are right now, I'm living at my parents' house in Northeast Pennsylvania. For those office fans out there, I'm in Scranton. Um, so definitely enjoying some summertime fun here, but I'm normally in Hoboken. Great. Thank you, Casey. Um, Raha, I'll go to you next. Hi, my name is Raha Malin. I graduated 2017. I was actually a history major with a double concentration in women and gender studies and Africana studies. Um, I'm originally from Mashby, Massachusetts, and um, I work in, I live and work in Manhattan. Um, I work for a nonprofit um, and I manage their high school internship program. Great, thanks Raha and um, Andrew. What's up, thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Andrew Smith. I graduated just a year ago, um, so I've, I've only been in New York about 11 months now. Um, at Holy Cross, I double majored in economics and history, and um, I currently work in finance at Goldman Sachs, uh, working in um, equity derivatives uh, in, in Manhattan. I, I tech, my apartment's in the West Village, but I've been home in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio for three, three months now. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so I guess we'll just get started um, with some of the questions that were pre-submitted, but um, Andrew, I'll go back to you to answer this one, but just kind of like, what is your favorite and least favorite part of New York or kind of why you ended up in New York after Holy Cross? Um, so I guess starting with the why, I interned um, where I currently work after my junior year, um, received a return offer. Um, I'd always wanted to be in New York. Um, I have a lot of, like all my cousins are in New York. I have family in the area. So I've spent a decent amount of time there. Um, so that was one and in, in kind of the job attracted me to. Um, I, I guess the favorite thing is like, number one, there's always, there's always something to do like outside of work, kind of no matter how many hours you work. Um, no matter whether it's, you know, kind of whatever social group you hang out with, there's, there's, it's like literally go, anything going on 24 seven. I'd say that the downside is, I mean, it, it is there's stuff going on all the time. Like it can get a bit, a bit crazy and there's so many people. Um, but I think like anyone who is interested in going to New York kind of, you know, has the crazy city, you know, in mind as they, as they move in. So that's kind of the downside. There's so many people, it's tough to find, you know, space that's a little more quiet, but um, it's not always bad. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, Raha, I'll toss that one to you. 
So my favorite part about New York City is definitely the trains. Um, I feel like I can go from one area. I can go from like Upper Manhattan to like downtown, like 20 minutes. Um, it's, I think you can like literally explore anywhere. There's so many like small like areas that are so different from one another. You can take the train anywhere. Um, so like, I think transportation is my favorite part, but it's also my least favorite part because sometimes it doesn't work or um, like, especially during the summer, it just gets really hot in the subway system, but it's my favorite because um, it like, the uh, New York subway system doesn't actually close. So it's like, typically like it's open all day, night, anytime. Um, so there's always a train. Um, so my favorite part is I think the transportation. Great, thanks Raha um, and Casey. To like remember how to unmute myself. Um, I think that my favorite part for me is a little more like work-based. So I work in communications and in PR and New York City is definitely the center of that. So I feel like I go out with media a lot. I, a lot of my job is building relationships and taking them out for drinks or going to workout classes with them. So kind of to Andrew's point, there's always something to do. It's very glitzy and fun when I get to charge it to the company card. Which brings me to my less fun part is that it's very expensive to live in New York City. Um, I think I kind of get the best of both worlds by living in Hoboken because I definitely have cheaper um, rent and it's really still super easy to get into the city. My monthly pass costs less than the uh, Metro card. So uh, good and bad, but it's definitely expensive. So just being mindful of that moving into the city, you, Got to get ready to shell it out. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. That's great. Um, and I know all three of you when in your introductions have mentioned not being from New York originally and kind of coming from, you know, other areas of the country. Um, and I guess the uh, first question kind of is, um, Andrew addressed this a little bit, but like, did you always want to live in New York and you knew from the time you were a kid or was it just something that kind of during your you know, time at Holy Cross was something that kind of came to fruition? Um, Raha, I guess I'll toss this to you first. Um, I did not know I wanted to live in New York City. I um, interned with an advertising company the year after, the summer after my sophomore year of college. Um, and that was my first time ever in New York City. And I fell in love with it and I knew I wanted to come back. So I went back the summer afterwards and then full time when I graduated. So um, I, I guess I like learned that I really loved it just through my internship. Awesome. And Andrew, I'll, th I'll throw this back to you. I kind of feel like you already answered this one, but if there's anything else you want to add. Um, for, like I've kind of always wanted to be there, like at least in a big city. Um, like, you know, I'd try out another big city too after this, but New York's awesome. It's like, in Casey's point too, it's like, this probably should have been, like, there's just always, to my point of, there's always something going on. Like, um, you know, I think everyone wants to be there. And, the, and you may think like a lot of the people are from New York or they grew up in Connecticut or Westchester or wherever it may be. Like, um, even at work, for example, or a lot of the people I've met socially, not everyone's from there. Like, I think a lot of, what attracts people to New York is, you know, a lot of it is kind of the best of the best in whatever industry, like communications, whatever it may be. Um, so it's kind of a common factor that, that drives people, not just from, you know, the U.S., but, but globally to New York. Great. Thank you, Andrew and Casey. Yeah, I, I don't think I have much to add to those two points. I, I did go to grammar school and kind of grew up in Westchester and I have a lot of family there still. So I always knew I wanted to be in New York City. I, my industry is in New York City. Of course, there are a lot of other PR hubs, but I wanted to work in consumer PR. So New York City was kind of where it was at. I want to be in the middle of it all. And that was New York City. So had to be here. <laughs> so that's a good place to end up then. That's great. Um, so I know a few of you had touched on kind of like finances and New York being expensive and you hear this all the time, um, but would love to touch a little bit more on kind of like the finance side of your, you know, your experience in New York so far in terms of kind of renting apartments and where you live. Um, so really just, you know, 
kind of what that experience looked like if it was right after graduation. Um, do you live with a roommate? Are you by yourself now? Um, just kind of some intel into what your living experience has been like in New York. Um, Andrew, I'll start with you. Sorry. Um, it, it's insane. Um, it's, it's ridiculously expensive. Um, and that starts with rent. So like, and, and it depends on what neighborhood, but generally stuff is very, very expensive. Um, for the past year, I've lived in the West Village, which is, it's, you know, a lot of people kind of want to be there and, and you're going to get a lot less space for, for the money. I lived with uh, three other guys this past year in a four bedroom and it worked out, but, but obviously it's just, it's just small. So if like, you know, I was in East village or something like that, or lower East side, we would have gotten a little bit more space. Um, but we found the place and, and the location was great. Uh, currently just kind of given COVID and whatnot, we're like putting, we're not renewing, renewing our lease and are kind of going to revisit. Um, which I think a decent amount of people are doing. So that's, we can talk about all that stuff later. Um, but outside of rent, um, you know, every, everything is just, it, it's super, super expensive. Going, getting drinks are really expensive, getting groceries. Like even if you're trying to budget, it, you'll go to the grocery store and realize like, you know, you'll leave thinking, I don't know how I just spent that much money on like three things. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um... Raha, I'll go to you. Um, my first year, um, I lived in Brooklyn because it was cheaper. So the further out you live away from Manhattan, the cheaper it gets. So I was able to, um, I think, live, I think you have to like adjust to the lifestyle that you want based on your salary and like what you can afford. So it was a I think an interesting balancing act for me, but one that I appreciated learning. Um, it just, I think that based on where you are, it's definitely um, teaches you to budget and like what you have money for. So it's, although I think my first year was a little bit more difficult, it was definitely a learning experience. Awesome, um, Casey. Yeah, so I'm definitely the odd one out here. I live in Hoboken, so while expensive, my rent is definitely a lot cheaper than if I was living in Manhattan. I live um, with three other girls. We have a bath and a half, and our space is, I would say, fairly large, much larger than I was expecting to move into. So I got a lot of space for a lot of cheap, for very cheap, a lot of cheap, very cheap. And um, it's been a really great option for me. I think that when I first got my job in Manhattan and I decided I wanted to take it, I did live with family in Westchester for a couple months while I was shopping around for an apartment, trying to figure out what was best for me, where exactly I want to be, if living in, I knew I couldn't afford living in Manhattan, so especially on my PR salary. So I had to figure out um, if I wanted to be in Brooklyn or Hoboken was kind of what I was weighing. And um I kind of jumped on the first thing I found that was like an okay fit so I think that's something a lot of people who are not necessarily from from New York City struggle with is like what is it going to look like like do I have to jump on the first place and that was definitely something I fell into I think looking back I probably would have spent a little more time apartment hunting I would have loved to have been a little closer to my friends in the city taking the path back to Hoboken at the end of the night is not the most fun thing in the world, but it was really great option for me to save money. My first year and a half, oh my God, year and a half, almost two years in the city and figuring that out. But yeah, I walk out the door and I make a joke that $20, just like 20 to $40 are just slipping out of my pocket the minute I leave my apartment. So it is what it is. <laughs> Casey, that's great. And I'll just do a follow-up question for you and Andrew, but you guys both mentioned that you live with roommates. Um, were they, you know, like people that you knew before or did you find them on Craigslist or kind of what did that process look like? I can go first. I found my uh, roommates on Craigslist. <laughs> I actually love Craigslist. I think it's one of the best ways to find really cheap apartments in Hoboken, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. I'm actually in the process of looking for a new apartment right now. So 
I am definitely all over Craigslist, but by like some random coincidence, my roommate from college, Kelly Kramer, worked with one of the girls that lived in the apartment that I found on Craigslist. So that was kind of my jump moment. I was like, oh my gosh, she's not a crazy person. I'm going to live with her. And I kind of just stopped the search there. Um, but yeah, Craigslist was, I was all over that. Still am. <laughs> nice when you find the mutual friend on Facebook that you know that they're a real person. That's always definitely, fun. yeah. It definitely made my parents feel a lot better about me moving in with three random girls that I've never met. <laughs> yeah. And you're all throw it to you. What about you? Uh, mine were all Holy Cross. Okay. Nice. And Raha, I don't know if you mentioned this, but do you have roommates or are you by yourself? Um, I actually don't know anyone who doesn't have a roommate. <laughs> um, I've always had a roommate. My first year, I had random roommates from like Facebook, and then my second year, I had met a friend that and we roomed together. Okay, nice. Um, and I'll I'll toss this question to whoever wants to answer it. But we had a Boston panel last week, and they talk a lot about how the Boston real estate market always starts like a September first lease, um, which I don't think is really the case in New York. But um, just in terms of kind of apartment hunting in general if you're looking to, you know you have a job and you're looking kind of what's your tip on like the first place to go or what a good you know what a good starting point is I will say my um as soon as I graduated I remember I had a week until I started my new job and in a week I had to find an apartment so I think as soon as you want to move it's I think the timeline is really flexible based on where you want to go there's a lot of vacancies and there's always someone looking for a roomie or to fill a room so if you want to move immediately it's always there great that's perfect I don't know if either one of you Casey it seemed like you were the Craigslist thing worked really well for you which I've heard really good things about from other people too so yeah, I, I took over a sublease, and I think that if you're willing to go in with random people, that's one of the best, like, most flexible ways to do it. You don't have to rely on a um, first of the month sort of situation, which was really convenient for me, and I think a general, I think a rule that a lot of people have told me, I don't know how true this is, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway, is that leases are definitely a lot more expensive in that August, September timeframe because there's so many students coming into the city for NYU, Columbia, but also people who just graduated and starting new jobs, intern, like things like that. So it gets really expensive if you can hold off until a more winter time lease, they tend to be less expensive. And um, the only downside to that is that there's less of them. So there's less leases opening up in January because the landlords want to fill them when they're in high demand in September. So it's just what works for you. That's great feedback. Thank you. And that I think moving in the winter is like the cheapest time if you're looking to save money. Um, Andrew, any kind of tidbits on, you know, how you found your apartment or anything? I don't know. Any, any um, I, I, I totally agree. I think, um, I was starting work at the end of July, same with my roommates. So we kind of, you know, were locked in and needed to find an apartment there. Uh, who knows what's, you know, coronavirus and shutdown and everything like that. Like rents have already fallen in New York. So it's kind of, you know, an inherent advantage for people moving to New York. Um, and, and who knows how long like virtual work will go and stuff like that. Like if you're really not going to start until maybe October or November, I think rents will definitely be cheaper, which would be great. Uh, and then in terms of finding an apartment, there, there's a ton of like popular websites like Street Easy and stuff like that. But but don't be afraid to just Google around. Um, like you can't even find there's like blog post on, you know, top 10 New York rental apartment sites. And there's there's kind of random stuff that pops up where, you know, you might be able to find something a little bit cheaper or not off the grid, but just like maybe not as because yeah, when a landlord posts something on street easy they're just a little bit more demand so um, definitely just look around that's great and there's another there's a question that we got from someone on the line that basically just said like is there any other websites and andrew i think that's a great that's one but anything else that either you or kind of a friend or coworker has found success with success with that you can think of off the top of your head i found my apartment randomly searching around on the New York Times rental website, which I didn't know existed. And then I later learned that's like for like 
a little bit higher end, like nicer apartments. I don't know why, like mine was listed on there, but it was, and it wasn't on anywhere um, else, which is great. There's really nothing else that comes to mind. Just like I look at the websites, but honestly, I kind of forget the names um, because there's just so many different random ones. I think to Ra's point as well, there, I probably joined like, I kid you not, 30 to 40 Facebook groups to see if I could find an apartment when I was in the middle of the search and living out of like my grandmother's and random friends' houses in Westchester. So definitely do that. I also really loved, um, oh my gosh, the listing project. They have a lot of really amazing apartments especially in Brooklyn if you're interested in moving there just like really cool sublets really cool um full-time apartments if you're an artist there's artist spaces and studios so I recommend the listing project like a hundred times over I would I want to move to Brooklyn just to live in one of those apartments um, and just to add to that there is Airbnb like a long-term stay so my when I first moved to the city I stayed with at an Airbnb for like four months um, so, and then, then I found an apartment, so you can always like do different like leases and things like that. That's great. Thank you all so much for that. Super helpful. Um, so we'll transition a little bit. I think we talked a little bit about kind of transportation and getting around and that kind of thing, but, um, I know we got questions about like, do you need a car? What does your commute look like on a daily basis? And obviously I know that with, um, COVID-19, the commute looks very different for a lot of us right now, but under normal circumstances, um, just talk about kind of your transportation and what you use in a week and um, any tips you would have. So Raha, I'll throw it to you first. Um, I use the train every day. <laughs> um, sometimes when I'm visiting friends, like upstate or something, I'll use like Amtrak um, or the Long Island Railroad, um, but typically I don't on a daily basis, I would just use the train. I learned, I think after a year of living in the city, I learned to take the bus. Um, so that was definitely like a new experience that I, I, once I learned to take the bus, I actually realized how much I loved it. Um, so I love taking the bus, um, love the train. But those are like the only two options, two things that I really use on a regular basis. That's great, thanks. Um, Casey, what about you? Yeah, so from, Hoboken the sometimes I hate that word I say it so often like Hoboken but I take the path into work every morning so the path is exactly like a subway you can use your metro card on it but I have a path card because I buy the unlimited ones and they stop at like downtown and it's basically it's really easy to get to Hoboken into downtown Manhattan it's also like 23rd is where I get off and then um, like 31st but you can also take the bus from Hoboken into Port Authority if you're going more Upper East Side or Upper West Side more Midtown area that's the most convenient way a lot of my roommates use the bus every day um yeah the bus and fun fact about buses in Manhattan are that they're almost always air conditioned so in the summertime they're so much better than taking the subway and you can use your unlimited card um, I, I lived in, like, on an internship, lived in the city, and I exclusively used buses, refused to go down to the subway, because they freaked me out. <laughs> That's great. Andrew, what about you? Sorry, was on mute. Um, um, my, I, so living in the West Village, my office is, is downtown. Um, and so I take the two or the three, which the, is the express. So it's super, super easy. It's just one express stop, which is great. Um, but there's no reason to do anything but like the subway or the bus. Like it's, it's very, very easy. Um, like some people I know at work or that I'm friends with may live in like, um, you know, certain areas where like the subway might not be as direct, like some people will do via, which is kind of like an Uber pool type thing, um, which if you get it at the right times, it can be cheap, but I'd say like 85% of people just do the subway. 
That's great. Um, and Casey, just to, to go back to you about like um, commuting in all sorts of weather, we know that New York, I feel like just gets like the hottest hot and like snowy and icy and um, hear kind of horror stories about the commute in the in the winter. Um, just kind of your thoughts and all of you can chime in about, you know, transportation like in the winter, in the summer, is it reliable? Like, does it get you to work on time? Um, I know sometimes like the weekends are different. Um, anything with that? Yeah, I think that I'm a little, like Hoboken's a little different just because there's only one line. So it's a lot more reliable. There's a lot less like issues and stops and things like that. Also, because there's so many ways to get into the city from Hoboken, whether it be the bus or the train, there's also a ferry. I literally have no excuse to be late to work and it's really upsetting. I wish I could be like, the subway's down. And then they're like, the CEO also lives in Hoboken. You should be able to get in. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm Ubering in then. So um, it's really, I don't have any issues. The winter and summer is obviously are rough, but um, you're New York City people now. You're going to get over it real quick. You're, we're a hardy folk up here. So it's like not snow boots in one hand, like your flats or whatever, trade shoes. Um, yeah, I uh, what, about, what about you? <laughs> yeah, I definitely have my uh, whole stash of actual work shoes at the office that I don't wear outside of the office. <laughs> I feel like many people echo that, so absolutely. And usually if like there's a train issue or a signal issue, um, like everyone will be late or like a good portion of the company that you work for. Like I sometimes like we'll have like morning meetings and like once in a blue moon, like a signal will be down and you'll have like half the workers be late and it's everyone knows and understands. So it's not like too big of a deal, but like once in a blue moon, there are signal delays. All right, that's really good to know that it's reliable. And Andrew, I'm assuming the same thing, especially with the Express, like that should be, I feel like pretty easy, but. Yeah, and like if there's an issue, like everyone understands, people kind of get it. Um, so yeah, no major issues. It depends when you go to, like sometimes, like I'd go to the gym a lot before work um, and it, you know, like when you get on, if you get on at like 545 or something, it, there's hardly anyone there. Um, you know, but if I didn't and it was a couple hours, hour later than that, like it definitely gets busier. Um, so you've got to plan for that too. That's great. Thank you. Um, okay. So we'll switch a little bit now. And I know we talked a little bit about kind of COVID-19 and the changes. And I know um, Andrew and Casey are both at home right now. So that obviously is a change in kind of lifestyle and what you're up to. But um just kind of talking about like what living in New York was like during all of this and um, for people that may be looking to, you know, move there relatively soon, kind of what to expect. Um, Raha, I can start with you. Um, it's definitely, I think, calmed down since like everything has been settled down since everything I think is like starting to reopen. Um, initially, it was really eerie. It was really quiet. Um, there wasn't a lot of people out. Um, but I think as more people have just become like normalized to this, that they're, like, they're still precautious, um, but there are more people outside and it's kind of just like known. Um, it's different. We're still like opening up slowly. So it's still like not fully like socially distanced or like everything isn't figured out yet. But um, it's, I think a little, at first I think it was a really just like kind of sad, but now it's, I think like warming up and like people are like starting to like adjust. That's good to hear. Thank you. Um, Casey or Andrew, either one of you can hop on on this. I'm waiting for Andrew to start. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I've been um, home, I guess it's crazy, it's crazy to say, three months now. Um, it's a, kind of a blip, kind of not. But I'd say, like, I, I was there a week ago. I went back to New York to get some of my stuff because um, our lease is up at the end of this month and we're, as I said, just kind of figuring it out. Um, but from the people I know too, like who have, who have been in New York, either people I work with or um, family or, or whatnot, it, it's definitely gotten a bit better. Um, probably some of that's the weather and a combination of, you know, people just kind of getting used to it too and you know, taking whatever proper precautions. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really all I can say because I haven't been there, but um, I think it's getting better. Yeah, I think. Nothing else to add there. It's 
been working from home. I, I think if you're a new grad or if you are like in the process of looking for a job, it can be super scary. I, I'm hundred percent confident that if I was in this situation, I would be taking every advantage of being like, mom, dad, I can't apply for jobs right now. Like no one's hiring. And like, can I stay home longer? But it's, people are hiring and I'm the first to admit that I've had to ask my IT guy to send me out a new desktop monitor because I didn't have one at home and we're shipping out laptops to new employees and to interns this summer. So um, people are still hiring, keep at it. And now's the perfect, and not to like switch into job mode, but now's the perfect time to get on all those HR and recruiters radars because as soon as things start opening back up, it's going to be an absolute floodgate of people searching for jobs like employees to fill the seats and making sure that everyone's a hundred percent back up to full function. So this doesn't have anything to do with the life in New York city, but keep hiring. It's not, it's not completely shut out. No, Casey, that's great. Um, and again, we'll switch over now to kind of like social life and, you know, friends and family and that kind of stuff. Um, I know, as we mentioned, all three of you are not from kind of the New York area. So I guess to start, um, were your, you know, were your families kind of like supportive of the decision for you to, um, for you to, you know, move to New York and um, when transitioning to these new places where you live, how did you kind of stay in touch with them and making sure that you were, you know, talking to people and doing the right thing? So. Um, I guess Andrew, I'll start with you. <laughs> yeah, my, like I think my parents, my parents wanted me to be in New York. Um, they lo they love coming to New York to visit. They've they've been a couple times um, since moving there. I like I have I have some family in the area too. Not that like I see them that much, but it's it just kind of makes it easier. And I think going to Holy Cross, like everyone knows, even if you're not from the area, like generally. I, like probably 40% of my friends uh, from Holy Cross are from, you know, definitely not from the city, but from New Jersey, um, New York or, or Connecticut. So that makes it easier too, where like, you know, you're not going, it's not like a foreign country. So I think going to school on the East Coast originally, like you're going to have some sort of um, support network, not that all your best friends have to live there. Um, but some familiar faces and too, like professionally, like there's a ton of Holy Cross grads in New York. Um, I don't know if it's as much as Boston, but, but probably. So that's helpful too. Yeah, that's great, Andrew. And I'll follow up that question. And I guess we can, you know, we can just open this up to anyone, but how do you, obviously there's a very strong Holy Cross, you know, network in New York. And how do you feel like you're able to kind of, you know, connect into that and stay, you know, involved with Holy Cross, even though you're um, off of campus and kind of out in the real world now? Yeah. So before, before I moved there, like, you know, navigating internships and stuff like that, I leveraged the the Holy Cross network, um, pretty hard. And so, you know, I, I helped, you know, that helped with the interview process for internships and, and leading to full-time, the full-time job. So I think, you know, a lot of people definitely do that. Holy Cross alumni are, are helping, are happy to help. Uh, and Holy Cross too has, you know, going off my comment on there's so many different people and it, it has such a strong network in New York. Like there are formalized programs like, um, there's a few, but, but one that I'm involved in is the Holy Cross Leadership Council of New York. Um, some of you may be familiar, but there's, there's like a dinner every either in late May or early June. Um, this year it was, it was postponed, or I guess canceled, um, just given everything going on. But, you know, there's stuff like that, that's, um, they support like internship programs for Holy Cross students in New York. So there's that, that's, you know, I guess you could say a little bit more professional, but there are, you know, social clubs too. Um, so it's, 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 you know, I'd say that the network is there both formally and informally if you want it. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Um, and Raha, I'll throw this to you. And I feel like that was like five questions. So whatever comments you want to make, you're totally fine. Oh, what was the question that you asked before? Like, what was your first question? To Just, I guess to talk about kind of like your family and when you moved, like, are they, you know, are they supportive or how are you kind of staying connected to them um, living in New York? 
Um, so my mom thought Holy Cross was too far. So convincing her of New York City was another challenge. Uh, but I think just communicating why New York is special and how many opportunities exist within the city. Um, and then connecting with fellow Holy Cross alum in New York City. It's relatively, like, really, really easy. Um, I've been to, like, a couple of, like, the career industry-focused panel or, um, like, networking, um, like, during things. And I found those to be super helpful, just, like, learning about, like, what other people do, where they are, what year they graduated in. It's definitely, um, and, like, even walking around with your, with your Holy Cross shirt, like, people, like, walk up to you and have, like, a full-on conversation. So it's definitely, like, a very supportive, Supportive, fun environment, like friendly. People are like very like excited to see like fellow Holy Cross people. We love to hear that. That's good. <laughs> Casey, what about you? Yeah, I, I'm on the same page. Um, there's always a new networking event <laughs> in New York City. I feel like I get emails about it all the time. Um, I'm part of the President's Council in New York City, so they always have a lot of really interesting events going on. And my class puts on a ton of, I don't know if every class does this, but my class puts on a ton of networking events. I think it's really just an excuse for all the 2018 kids to get together at a bar and hang out. But I see more Holy Cross people than I see my coworkers on some weeks because it's like, they all happen around the same time. So they will be like five in one week and I, it's so fun. Um, yeah, my parents wanted me out of their, they're like, please get to work. Let's go. What are you doing? Summer's over. Um, so they were super excited. My mom actually worked in Manhattan while I was growing up and telecommutes and then is in the city a lot. So she, I see her all the time. We go out to dinner. She, she's always around. <laughs> she loves hanging out with my coworkers. She'll like pop up at our work happy hours. So family wasn't an issue. And I have a lot of family in the area, but the Holy Cross community, I think, is really strong. There weren't too many of my close friends that ended up in Manhattan, but those that did, I think, were really close-knit and stay in touch. I'm with them basically every weekend, so it's not... Holy Cross... Boston may be the hub of Holy, of Holy Cross, but I think that New York City is doing its best to rival it in every way, so no, no lack of crusaders here. <laughs> We, we love that. And um, way to go 2018 for the, uh, the constant networking events. We love that. Um, Casey, I'll throw this back to you too, but just in addition to all kind of the Holy Cross stuff, what's kind of your like favorite fun thing to do when, you know, everything's open and um, I don't know, what do you like enjoy socially about New York the best? Yeah, I think that I mean, New York City is definitely a restaurant bar city. There's not that much to do that isn't maybe I'm just not looking in the right places. There's not that many free things to do. So um, I sound like such a basic white girl. I love going to brunch. I love happy hour. <laughs> I, my coworkers do a lot of net or a lot of happy hours. And like I mentioned before, for my work, I have to do a lot of social outings with media editors and things like that. So I'm always trying out a new class in the city or there's a lot of cooking classes that are honestly my favorite thing to do. I constantly recommend them for work events, so I don't have to pay for them. But I would recommend if you guys want to come and come work at Hunter and do <laughs> cooking events with us. It's really fun. Um, there is a lot of green space, which is great. I know people kind of get lost in the fact that it's New York City and there are a ton of concrete jungles but the green space is awesome on the weekends, especially right now, which is why I'm kind of bummed to be home. But being out in Central Park or in Hoboken, there's a ton of awesome green space that you can just go sit out, read a book, bring a bottle of wine. You'll be there all day. It's really pretty special. Spring and summer in New York City is unparalleled to anything else, I think. That's awesome. Thanks, Casey. Um, Raha, what's kind of your, your go-to? Um, my favorite thing about New York City is probably just like the diversity. There's like, I think I'm really into art and like there's a bunch of museums. There's like, there's like the fashion here, like everything is just, there's so many like unique individual places, but also people that you see just walking around that just kind of like make an impact on you. Um, so I think 
just walking around the city, you'll definitely find something to do. And that's definitely my favorite thing to do is just, you just walk and see a bunch of different things in the city. Um, so that's definitely been my favorite, but also like a lot of museums, a lot of like independent art scenes, music. Um, there's a really strong like independent music scene. Um, so there's always something. That's great, thank you. Um, and Andrew, what about you? As I said in the beginning, um, there's a lot of there's a lot to do for for anyone. It's um, you know if, if you're if you want to do if you you know are more into art, there's the best of that. Fashion is the best of that. Um, I find myself too like to Casey's point. It's a lot of uh, it's definitely like a lot of what your friends will want to do. My friends, you know, it's always like, oh, let's go to a bar for a little bit. Let's go out to eat. Let's do stuff like that, which is definitely fun. Um, so I do that a ton. Um, a lot of like work events and stuff like that too. Um, either dinner or, or drinks with clients or getting taken out as a client, things like that. Like, I think the good thing too is now people try to do more like active stuff, like either with your friends, but like now a lot of business events they'll do like workout classes like you know everyone's kind of doing that it's not just like oh you know some people will do that like um I, I did that pretty frequently throughout the year so there's stuff like that you know with your work colleagues with with friends from home friends from holy cross wherever it may be um but again like there's you can find anything to do no matter you, know, you don't have to like always going to bars and stuff like that like there's a ton yeah, and Andrew, to go back on that, I know you mentioned both um, like being active, you know, in classes and work stuff, but also you said you're you go to the gym normally like before work in the morning, and I guess that's always a good question for us too. Like, do you guys have gyms in your apartment complex? Do you belong to a you know some sort of gym that's kind of close to work, further away? Um, just kind of tidbits on that too. I'll I'll start. I guess um, I have one in my building at work. Um, which is good and bad. It was mostly good. Um, you know, I go before work sometimes when it was like warmer out, like, if, you know, I wear a suit every day to work. So it's, you know, if it's seven fifteen in the morning, it's already, it already can get pretty warm out if it's like, you know, the end of August, early September. So you kind of like sweaty on your way to work and you just feel gross. But if you, if you go to the gym before, you can shower there and, and get ready and you just take the elevator or I take the elevator right up to, to my floor, which is nice. Um, and people do different things too. Like some of the people I work with use it at work. The downside to that is you see people from work at the gym. Like it's, it's a huge building. So it's not like, you know, I see that many people I know, but from time to time you do, I don't mind it. Some people don't like that at all. So they'll join a gym um, by their apartment or if, if you live in some apartments, they may have a gym. Realistically, your apartment, your first year out of school is not going to have a gym because those are a little bit more expensive. Um, but you just kind of, you know, whatever works for you. And some people just do the classes, which obviously can get very expensive and it's better when, you know, work pays for those, but you just got to figure it out. Yeah, Raha and Casey, I'll open it up to either one of you two with any, you know, any feedback on that. Oh, I, um, I'm a part of a gym that's like two blocks away. So I just walk three minutes and there it is. So pretty easy. That's great. Yeah, my work. So I don't have a gym membership or pay, like it gets a little dicey because I take a lot of my editor's clients to workout classes. So it's like my once a week, I'm like, look, we're going to go do something fun and active. But my commute also is like, easily 10,000 steps a day. So I'm like, that, that feels about right for me. I'm going to sign off there and take the stairs up to my fifth floor apartment. <laughs> no, and I know, especially when you have the, uh, the grocery bags on your, on your arms, that's, that's a real thing. So that's great. Um, okay. And then just another, another kind of social question, but, um, it seems like a lot of people kind of your friends are like, you know, your work colleagues and you know, maybe some Holy Cross people and that kind of thing. But, um, how do you feel like you make new friends in New York or, um, if you were going to do that and like, you didn't really know a ton of people, as Casey said, I know you said not all your, you know, good Holy Cross friends ended up in the city. Um, so how'd you make new friends? Yeah, I think that, 
That's a good question that I'm still like trying to figure out. I, a lot of my close friends in the city now are actually friends I met through coworkers. So like I just kind of got incorporated into their friend group and then now I'm hanging out with them without my work friend. And I also, a lot of my cousins, I know Andrew mentioned he had a lot of family in the city, but a lot of my cousins live in the city and they're my default. If like no one else will do happy hour with me, they're always like, sure Casey, let's get a drink. So a lot of their friends have also become my friends, which is nice. It's like having a little bit of a, a bit of family in the city, but I, I'll, I'll toss another. It's, it's hard make, it can be hard making friends. I think it's, you definitely have to put yourself out there just like making friends in college. That's great. Um, Raha, you can go ahead. Um, I think I, along with you, I've also made friends just from having one friend who has another friend, happy hour, and then you become close with them. With them. Um, I've also met some really cool friends just at like conferences or like different venues that I've been to. So typically like the place, so like for example, I was at a conference and the other person was also interested in education and we became friends and got coffee. So it's really easy to like meet, make a friend meet up and like actually hang out and like keep a relationship going in the city. Awesome. Andrew, any, anything else to add? Not really, no. I mean, like, through work, you don't only want to be friends with, with your colleagues. Some meet people outside of that. But, you know, if you're starting at a, a company that doesn't have to be a huge company, but generally you're starting with people your age. Um, like, I had, I had training for a few weeks at the beginning, and there were, you know, company-hosted happy hours at the beginning of that. Sometimes we just do them on our own. So that's a way to meet people in the beginning. Like, you know, and it's, it's similar to Holy Cross where, or any college where you have to put yourself out there, but it, you know, to a, a degree, it's a little bit different where you're not like being thrown in a dorm room with, a, you know, a ton of whatever we were 18 or 19 when you're going to college. Um, so you're like really forced to be friends there. You're not going to be friends with everyone in, in your apartment building. I didn't make one friend of my apartment building. Um, so it's a little different, but like, it's New York. There's a ton of people. It's not, you know, a desolate city. Like it's, it's quite the opposite. So the, the people are there if you want them. Great. Thank you all so much. Um, so I guess we have, we have about 10 minutes left. So I think I'll open this up to kind of the last, the last question, unless we get anything else um, that submitted through the chat, but what's one thing now looking back on your time in New York that, um, you wish you had known before going or you wish you could share with someone else looking to move. Um, and I guess Casey, I can start with you. I was hoping I'd be last, but <laughs> you, can I, pass, you can pass it to someone else if you want. <laughs> I'll let them think on it. I, I feel like that and maybe it comes easier to them, but um, I think at least it might be easier to narrow to like housing for me because I think I wish I mentioned, I touched on it earlier, but I wish I had just looked a little hard. I think I was so in my, I think I put it in my head so strongly that I never would have been able to like rent in Manhattan. It's too expensive. I've never been able to live there. And I felt like I really had to put myself in Hoboken or Brooklyn which are both really great places to live. And I've loved living in Hoboken, don't get me wrong, but I wish I'd been a little bit closer to my friends. I think having that support system and network right out of college um, is really important because you're coming off, I mean, hopefully everyone loved their experience at Holy Cross and felt like they had a community there, um, but you're coming off of this really passionate and active community like Holy Cross and into what can feel like a really big and intimidating city. And you definitely get used to it. You definitely learn to love it and find your place within it, but it takes some time. So I wish I had pushed myself to live a little closer to my friends. Um, of, honestly, it just wasn't financially possible for me, but if it is, or just, I wish I looked a little harder to find affordable housing near them. I don't know. That's, that would be what I wish I had done, but. No, Casey, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, Andrew, what about you? Um, I, I would, I would just say, I agree with the point that, you know, you're coming from Holy Cross where like I lived off campus my senior year, lived with 
you know, nine of my best friends. Um, so it's just constant entertainment. Like it's just entertainment whenever you want it. Um, you know, you know, everyone, and then you're going into a city where a decent amount of my friends from Holy Cross moved there, but more of them moved to Boston. Um, so it was a bit different and it's not like the constant kind of entertainment all the time and your, your roommates are starting new jobs. So everyone's kind of figuring it out at the same time. So, you know, just take a step back, I would say, cause you're not going to figure it out right away, like either socially or professionally, like starting a job is, you know, one thing, like you may have interned, but those are only 10 weeks long and they're a little bit different than entering the world, real world. And you're like, you know, I'm doing this for, for 40 more years. Um, it's kind of never ending. So it's, it's a bit of different mentality. Um, then socially too, it's, you know, you're not going to meet all of your best friends right away. So like, just take a step back. Um, it, it flies by too. Like, I can't believe, you know, I already graduated. The last three months have been, obviously I, I don't count those. It's a little bit different, but um, it's hard to believe I've been out of school a year now. Um, so enjoy the time too. Great. Thank you. And Raha, what about you? Um, if I could tell myself one thing just back in the day, it'd probably be like being uncomfortable is okay. And not knowing is okay too. Um, because I remember graduating and really like kind of stressing and like always just kind of a little anxious about what my next step was going to be. And when am I going to, when am I going to find this apartment? Like, who's my roommate, you know, like always being like stressed out and being like anxious. So knowing that it'll all work out and that being uncomfortable actually mold you to be like a stronger person and that like everything will work out in time. And sometimes it's bad at first and then it gets better. Like it's, your first job is never your last job. Your first apartment's not going to be your last apartment. It all, to Rob, it, it all works out. <laughs> and I would say too, like with the added complexity of, of, you know, a, a shutdown across the country and New York is, is the epicenter of probably the world. Um, like that just kind of creates added anxiety, I guess, confusion. You don't really know what's, what's going on. So like it will seriously all work out. And like, even at work, I, I was on a call this morning and like, it seems like it changes week to week on our status and everyone's in the same of like, who's going back. Like we'll get one email from company as a whole saying, Oh, people are going to go back. But then, you know, I heard from my boss this morning. Oh, that's not really what that means. So everyone's confused. Like, you know, so it's fine. Like if that's professionally, like you're worried, Oh, maybe not advancing because I'm not in front of people. No one's in front of people. So it doesn't matter. Um, and then two, moving to New York, just everyone's in the same boat. When you're, if you're starting a new job, everyone's going to be pretty understanding because at the same time, you know, the people who hired you, colleagues of mine, like it's confusing for them too. Like a lot of them have young kids and they're figuring out the work from home. So, you know, even like if someone, you know, integration to your new job is not going as well as you wish virtually, like no one's job's going perfect over Zoom. So so just kind of take a step back. That's great, Andrew. Thank you so much. Um, and we just got one more question on the chat, which I'll just open up to all of you guys if you want to answer. But um, it says, what's considered a good or ballpark price range to budget for one person for an apartment, like depending on, I guess, where you are, both in you know Manhattan versus somewhere else, or like if you're by yourself sharing with someone, um, just I guess any kind of feedback on pricing would be helpful. So. Um, I went to, um, actually a workshop right before I graduated on like living expenses and how you should budget. And I remember it was like one third of your income should be your rent. So basically use that as a, um, like a, I don't know, like a varying, um, price point. Yeah. And Raha, I was going to say, is that something that you feel like is attainable for you right now? Right now, yes. Initially, um, it was a little more difficult, definitely. Um, but right now, yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I think that um, I heard, again, you hear a lot of things living in Minnesota. Like <laughs> I don't really know if any of this is true, but I've always felt like 1500 is a pretty normal range for living in Manhattan. Um, you're definitely going to have roommates. You're definitely not going to have 
laundry in your apartment. You're definitely not going to have a gym in your building. Um, but I, I don't know, like you guys can definitely tell me if I'm wrong, but I've heard 1500 is fairly normal in Hoboken. I think that is like $500 less. So a thousand dollar range is pretty normal. Great for a apartment. Um, and it depends where you live. Obviously if you live like in the upper, upper west side or really up in the east side that you might be able to find lower than 1500 but if you're living in um like murray hill or gramercy or things like that where a lot of new grads tend to flock to that seems to be from what my friends have paid pretty normal i don't know about brooklyn so i won't speak on it no that's great casey thanks I agree with that. I think Manhattan, I'd say, yeah, like if you're going to live with maybe one or two other people, I think 1500 is fair. All right, that's great. Um, okay, so I think that that wraps up our time tonight. Um, and I wanted to thank um, Raha, Andrew, and Casey for a great conversation tonight, and also everyone that's on the line listening. Um, I hope that you you know, took some tidbits of information away and hopefully this will make kind of your decision on which city you're going to move to or your move to New York City um, a little bit easier. Um, but we, we thank you all for joining us tonight um, and we hope we see you on some Holy Cross webinars very soon. Thank you all so much. Have a great night.